Naboth's Naboth by Rudyard Kipling. Uh, this is uh, this is how it happened, and the truth is also an allegory of empire. And um, yeah, I'm probably not as much in the not not enough to need to know in the know to be able to get all the illusions and what's being said here. We have an English fellow who's got a garden, and um, Naboth comes to him. He was uh, a starving guy, just with clothed in, a lo in an unclean cloth around his loins. Uh, and he, he, asks for, he asks for money, and he gives him, he happens to have a rupee in his uh, coat lining, so he gives him that. Naboth takes the money, uh, has a bit to eat, uh, and sets up a sweetmeats uh, thing, uh, sweet, sweetmeats uh, stand. Uh, and then he asks, can I set up a sweetmeat stand uh, just, you know, over there by, at the end, uh, just, just so I can look upon you, the, uh, the benefactor of the poor, which is something that oftentimes seems like people say to characters, English characters in this book, that they're the protector of the poor and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so, so she's always flattered, says yes. He sets it up. Uh, and slowly over the course of the story, it kind of goes, it backs up, backs up until it's into the shrubbery. And then he starts eating the shrubbery. He builds uh, something with a, a, a thing with mud huts, trellis. He has wives. He's um, he's getting all of uh, the, the, the unnamed English narrators, uh, uh, servants drunk. Um, there's a murder. Um, you know, it, it gets it gets more and more sort of out out of the thing a brick later a coolie brick later there's a whole bunch of like 400 coolies coolies there which is what they call the laboring class i probably don't even want to go into the racial stuff on it um and then he is he was uh he was i was driving home in the dusk and turned the corner by naboth's vineyard quickly and the next thing the horses the fantian were stamping and plunging the strongest sort of bamboo network both beasts came down. One was okay, but the other one he had to shoot. Uh, and so, and then we have a jump. And so Naboth is gone now, and his hut is plowed into the native mud with sweetmeats instead of salt for a sign that the place is accursed. So, like, I guess that was the last straw. He mowed the whole place down. Instead of salting the earth, very biblically, he sweetmeated the earth. Uh, and he's built a summer house to to overlook the end of the garden, and it is as a fort on my frontier whence I guard my empire. I know exactly how Ahab felt. He has been shamefully misrepresented in this in the scriptures. So that's Ahab and Ahab. Is is Ahab and the whale? Or is Ahab no it's uh I can't remember thing. So I do get the sense it's like Darn it, I have this lovely empire. We don't get the earlier part of the story where he kicked everybody off this bit of land and um, uh, took all the, the profits for himself and all the other stuff of empire. Uh, he's a protector of the poor, maybe not the source of, of some of the misery uh, that's going on, or at least a different kind of misery. He's probably, he's probably edged out other guys who are exploiting uh, the population and the stuff um, for resources. Uh, so, yeah, I... I yeah, I, I don't know all the ins and outs. It's a story like this, I think, I how Gandhi felt about Kipling and how Kipling felt about Gandhi. Because I would think they would be pretty much opposite ends of the of the uh, the divide there. It would be interesting to, uh, I should look up if Mahatma Gandhi or whatever he was at this point was reading Kipling and what he thought of Mr. Kipling and his works. All right, I will leave it there.